Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today we're going to go over all of the filters that have to do with working with arrays. As always, we'll have timestamps in the description below, so if there's a specific filter that you'd like to see, feel free to jump right to it, or just bookmark this video for future reference. We're going to give you examples of how each of these filters work and how to use them. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are in Xano. We have a very simple function stack. Uh, we're just creating a couple of arrays and returning the result right now. So let's take a look at that just so you can see the test data. So we have two arrays. The first array has one, two, three, four, and the second array has three, four, five, and six. So let's go ahead and start looking through the array filters. The first filter we're going to be looking at is called append. What append allows you to do is just add an element onto the end of an existing array. There's also an option for path. So if you're working with an array of objects, like for example, if you're querying records in a database, that's going to be an array of objects. You can update a specific value at a path inside of that object. So for this example, I'm just going to push a value of 10. So let's go ahead and save this. So that means our first array should say uh, one, two, three, four, and then 10. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, and 10. So that is the append filter. The next filter we're going to be looking at is count. Count just returns the number of items in an array. So you can see we get a result of four because there are four items in this array. The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called diff. Diff stands for difference. It returns the entries of the first array that are not in the second array. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We're going to create a new variable for this, and I'm just going to call it diff. Our first value is going to be our first array, and then we're going to add the diff filter. And our second value, the array that we're comparing to, is going to be our second array. So let's go ahead and save this, and we will return the result. And let's get rid of our count filter from before. And now if we run this, you can see the difference between these two arrays is one and two. Now the diff filter only uses the values for matching. If you needed to use the values and keys for matching, we do have a filter available for this as well. The next filter we're going to be taking a look at is called entries. And what entries does is it takes an array or an object and it splits that out into separate key and value pairs. So let me kind of show you what I mean. That's gonna be the easiest way to do this. So I'm gonna run this function, which just queries my merchants table. Uh, so you can see we have one result and that is uh, Taco Bell, okay? So let's go ahead and apply the entries filter to this object. So all we do is we add the entries filter. There's no options that go along with this. And we'll save and then we'll run. So you can see what this has done is this has split this object into an array of objects with separate keys and values. This can be really useful if you are having to do some manual construction of your own objects based on something like an API response. So the next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called every. Every allows us to leverage a Lambda function against this array. A Lambda function, if you're not familiar, is a way that allows you to insert custom JavaScript into your Xano function stack. When you use the every filter, it is required that all of the elements in the array match the condition that you're presenting. So let's go ahead and uh, try an example here. So my code is going to return whether or not every single element of this array has a price that is greater than 10. Let me show you the array that we're working with here. So in this array, we have two products. We have product A and product B. One has a price of 10 and one has a price of 50. So let's go ahead and run. And you can see we're returned a false because both of those products do not have a price greater than 10. However, we can go back into our filter and let's change this to one. And we'll go ahead and save this. And you can see we are now returned a true because all of the elements in the array match that condition. 
The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called filter. Filter also allows you to leverage Lambda functions. What this does is it returns a new array that only contains the results that qualify as true based on the statement that you're presenting. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll go ahead and paste our code in here. So we're returning all of the products where the price is greater than 10. Save this and we'll run. So because we only have one product that has a price greater than 10, you can see that is all that's returned in our new array. Similar to the every filter, we also have a filter called sum, which will determine if at least one of the elements in the array evaluate as true in the code block. The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called map, which uses a Lambda function to transform the elements of an array into whatever format you would like based on the code. This is super powerful because it allows you to do super quick transformations on an array of objects. So as an example, we have a list of user records here. So let's say I wanted to just get the emails out of there. I wanted to do it in one step super quick. So we can use the map filter. So what we're doing is we are returning this, which is the element in the array dot email, which is the path to the actual email value. So we'll go ahead and save this and let's run. And you can see we're just returned an array with those email addresses. That's exactly what we wanted. The next filter that we're going to be talking about that works with lambdas in relation to arrays is called reduce. Now this is probably the most complicated of the lambda filters. This filter is responsible for taking your array and reducing it into a single result. The most simple example of this would be to get the sum of values in your array. So we need to first specify an initial value. This is typically going to be zero. And in our code, we're going to say, I want to return this dot price plus results. So this will add all of the prices and give me the sum. So let's go ahead and save this. And we will run. So you can see we're returned 60, which of course is the sum of 10 plus 50. We have two more filters that take advantage of Lambda functions in regards to arrays. The first one is find, which just finds the first element that evaluates as true. So let's go ahead and apply this again, pasting the same code. So we should be returned our product B with a price that is higher than 10. And finally, the last filter that works with Lambda functions in regards to arrays is find index. So let's talk very broadly about arrays for just a moment. So when you have an array, an array is typically numerically indexed. What does that mean? That means that each element in the array has a number associated with it that we can use to identify that specific element in the array. That index starts at zero. So if we take a look at our regular array that we have set up right now. Let's go ahead and just run this. So this array has two elements. The first element, this product A, this has an index of zero. The second element has an index of one. The third element would have an index of two and so on and so forth. So what the find index filter allows us to do is this allows us to return the index of the element that evaluates as true based on the code that we're providing. So again, if we apply the find index filter and we use our same code, we are going to be returned the index of product B, which is going to be one. Now, obviously this was a very simple example. I'm not going to pretend that these filters are super easy to use because again, they do implement some custom code. We do have in our documentation, some examples and a general overview of how this works. If you'd like to dive in a little bit deeper into this. The next filter that we have is called filter empty. And all this does is this returns a new array with entries that are not empty. So let's go ahead and let's mess with one of these arrays a little bit and let's go ahead and push uh, an empty value. So we'll just add a push filter there and then we'll go ahead and add six. So we now have an empty value and then six. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. We'll go ahead and clean up our response here just so that is all we see. And if we run, so you can see we have one, two, three, four, and then our empty value and then six. 
So if we add the filter empty filter to this result, we can run and debug this. And you can see we just have one, two, three, four, and six. So that empty value is gone. Now, the really cool thing about this filter is you can also use it to work with arrays of objects. So you can see we have an option to specify a path. So let's say you have an external API. You're querying a bunch of data and you're using the bulk add records function to add it to your database table. Now, let's say these results that are being returned some of them contain empty values. And for those results that have empty values, you don't want to add those records. With the filter empty filter, I could specify a path to that empty value and we could just immediately pull all of those empty results out of there in one swoop. It's very powerful. Now, something else to note here is this doesn't just work with specifically empty values. And what I mean by that is this will also work with null values empty arrays, empty objects, or a blank text string. So you have the quotes there, but nothing in between it, things like that. The next filter that we have is called first. This one is very simple. This just gets the very first entry in an array. So you can see we get a one because that's the first value in our array, very simple. The next filter is called flatten. What flatten does is let's say you have an array that has multiple levels. Flatten will take those multiple levels and turn them back into a single level array. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and we will push another array inside our existing array. And we will take a look and see what that looks like. So let's remove our previous filter and we will run. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, and then we have another array in our existing array and then six. So let's go ahead and apply the flatten filter. And you can see how this changes. One, two, three, four, six, and one. So we've taken that multi-level array and we've turned it back into a single level array. The next filters that we're going to be taking a look at are intersect. Intersect is very similar to the diff filter, except instead of returning values that are not present in the second array, we're returning values that are also present in the second array. So let's take a look at one of these quickly. We'll go ahead and put array two in our value. So you can see we are returned three and four because these are the values that are present in the first array that are also present in the second array. And we're only using the values for matching. We also have another filter available if you'd like to use the key and values to match. The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called join. Join will take an array and transform it into a text string. So let's take a look and just see what that looks like. So when we apply the filter, we're asked what our separator is. Our separator is a comma. So we'll go ahead and update this and we'll save and let's take a look and see what that looks like. So you can see we now have a text string with the values from our array. If we wanted this to be separated by a colon instead, we could easily change this separator and we can run and debug. So now we have one, two, three, four separated with colons. So this can be useful if you need to return the results of an array as a text string. Maybe that's how you have to work with a specific front end that you're using. If you need to present your array as a text string, this filter is gonna easily let you do that. The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is keys. Keys will take an object, pull the keys out of it, and return it as a new array. So in this object that we have here, we have keys and we have values. Our keys are ID created at name and description. So if we apply the keys filter to this, you can see we're returned a very simple array with those keys in it. The next filter that we're going to be talking about is called last, which just returns the last entry of an array. So we can take a quick look at that. We are returned four, which is the last element in our array. The next two filters that we're going to be talking about are merge and merge recursive. These are very similar. And what they do is they merge arrays together. The only difference is merge only works with the first level of an array. So if you have a multi-level array, like we looked at earlier, this will only merge the values from the first level. Merge recursive will merge the values at all levels. 
So let's go ahead and apply the merge filter. We have array one merging with array two. And we'll run. So you can see these are our two arrays merged into one. This is also a great opportunity to show you the unique filter. The unique filter will return the unique values of an array. So let's take another look at our response. You can see we have one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. So we have a couple of values that are duplicated. So let's go ahead and apply the unique filter. So with the unique filter applied, we are returned one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have both of these arrays merged together and the unique values are what is returned. The next filter that we have is called pop, which just takes the last element of the array and returns it. So if we save this, we should see a value of four. The next filter that we have is called prepend, which pushes an element to the beginning of an array. You can also use this to work with values inside an object and then return the updated object. So for this example, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm just gonna add a value of 10 to the beginning of my array. So you can see we have 10, one, two, three, four. The next filter that we have is push, which adds an element to the end of the array and then returns the new array. So if we use push, let's push a value of 99 to our existing array. So you can see we get one, two, three, four, and 99. The next filter that we have is called range, which returns an array of values between the range that you specify. So we can say, I want to return every values between two and four. And we'll go ahead and save this and we will run. So you can see we return two, three, and four because that is what matches the condition that we provided to the range filter. The next filter that we have is called remove, which removes anything from the array that matches the value that we're supplying. So again, we can work with an array of objects as well by specifying a path. For this example, I'm just going to remove the value of two. You also have the option to enforce strict type matching using this filter. So as an example, you could have a value or you could have a value in a text string. So as an example, in my data, let's say I not only have integers that are values of two, but let's say I have text strings that just have the number two in them. If I have strict turned on, Right now, this will only remove the integers of two. If I leave this false, this would remove integers of two and text strings of two. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see we are returned one, three, and four after using the remove filter. The next filter that we have is reverse, which just reverses the order of the array. So when we run this, we should be returned four, three, two, and one. The next filter that we have is called safe array, which just guarantees that we are always returning an array. So as an example, if I was just going to type the word hello into my response, so this will return us an array with the value of hello. The next filter that we have is called shift, which will take the first value of an array and return it. So if we apply shift to our array, we will be returned one. The next filter that we have available is called shuffle. As the name suggests, this shuffles the entries in the array and returns the result. So you can see we have four, one, three, and two instead of one, two, three, and four. If we run this again, we have three, one, two, and four, and so on. The next filter that we have is called slice, which extracts a section from an array. So we are using the indexes to determine where we want the slice to start. So if I say I want it to start at index one, that's going to be the second value in my array. And let's say I want the length to be two. And we'll update this and save. Now let's see what this looks like. So you can see we're returned two and three. So we've started at the index of one and we've returned two values. The next filter that we're going to be taking a look at is called sort. Sort will allow us to as the name implies, sort an array by the options that we provide. So we first have the option to specify a path. Again, very useful if you're working with an array of objects and you want to sort by a specific value that's located inside those objects. We also then have the sorting type. So we can specify, we can sort by number, by text, or by natural, which is sort of a hybrid approach to 
a value of numbers or text. And then we also, of course, have the case insensitive versions of text and natural sorting. Because we're just working with numbers today, we'll go ahead and apply a number sort. And then, of course, we can apply ascending or descending order to this sort. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see that we are returned one, two, three, and four because that is our array sorted in ascending order. Let, let's go ahead and change this to descending order just so you can see this change. So let's run and you can see now we have four, three, two, and one. The next filter that we're taking a look at is called unshift, which just pushes an element to the beginning of the array and returns the new result. So let's go ahead and use a value of 99. And we will run and you can see that we are now returned an array that starts with 99. The final filter that we're going to be taking a look at today is called values. Values is very similar to the keys filter. However, in this case, it returns the values of the object. So let's take a look at our object first. And you can see very standard keys and values. Now, if we add the values filter to this, you will see that we are now just returned an array with only the values from that object. Those are all of the array filters that are currently available inside of Xano. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. You can also leave a like and subscribe while you're down there. You can also visit us in support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one.